Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the private endpoint for Azure storage account. Uh, we have covered the under networking, how to open storage account for a particular IP addresses right here and the service endpoint. Now this is the time where we'll be talking about the private endpoints. Well, private endpoints is uh, highly secure because it will uh, give your storage account a private IP from your virtual network. Well, we'll be talking uh, simultaneously and we'll be performing the lab. So the task for this lab is accessing a storage account over the private endpoint. Okay, so as I've mentioned already, private endpoints uh, for your Azure storage accounts uh, gets the private IP address from your virtual network. So th what that means, that means it will uh, require a subnet, okay? So, we'll be observing each and everything while we'll be creating it. So, and we'll be talking about it simultaneously. So under networking, if I go and select private endpoint, I would click on add private endpoint. From here, I could add this private endpoint, okay? And this private endpoint is a special network interface that we'll see once it is created. When, uh, when you create a private endpoint for your storage account, it provides secure connectivity between clients on your virtual network and your storage. What that means, the virtual machine that I have, this one, which is a part of the virtual network, would be able to access this uh, storage account over the private IP address or through the private link. So let's quickly go ahead and perform this lab. I'm going to give it a lab uh, name, storage private endpoint. And I want it in the East US because that's where my virtual network is. Click on resource. And here I need to select what resource because this private endpoint and link service, uh, <clears throat> private endpoint. Uh, could be used for the other services of Azure storage account that we have already covered. Tables, queues, file, web is for the static website. We'll check that as well, because uh, if you're following me, uh, following the, the series, you know we have already enabled the static website on this particular storage account. So we'll see that as well. So we need blob right now. So I'm gonna hit blob and click on configuration. Now here you can see I have created one more subnet, uh, default and subnet two. So you can choose any subnet where you want to uh, add this, it give the private IP address to the private endpoint. And it says it will disable the NSG on the subnet only for this particular uh, endpoint. Okay. And it will create this uh, DNS, which is very important because your private IP address is going to resolve to this private link.blob.core.windows.net. And uh, the public endpoint, if you remember, we talked about it, like storage name.blob.core.windows.net, those URL, they would be uh, resolved uh, to the private and then it will be accessed. The C name would be created. Uh, a record for, for a private link. I'll, I'll show you once we go ahead and we'll check all the resources which would have been created uh, while creating the private endpoint, okay? All right, so let's, in, in the next we have tags. Now we are focusing on the private endpoint in this lab. So let's click review and create. Hit create. 
And when you create a private endpoint, the DNSC name, C name, resource record for the story account is updated to an alias in a subdomain with the prefix private link. And by default, it will also create uh, a private DNS zone corresponding to the private link subdomain with the DNS A resource records for the private endpoints. And when you resolve the storage endpoint URL from outside the virtual network with the private endpoint, it resolves to the public endpoint of the storage service. And when resolved from the virtual network, uh, we net hosting the private endpoint, the storage endpoint URL, storage endpoint URL resolves to the private endpoint's IP address. Okay, so let's wait while it is creating. And meanwhile, let me go to the home to the storage account. And I'll show you the what we have inside the containers. I can access these, I can access these. Okay, I cannot access this. Maybe something, or maybe I forgot to save all networks here. Yes, all networks and save. Uh, our endpoint is, is being created here. It is not yet created. It is in progress. So while it is in progress, uh, I'm showing you this. Uh, containers because now I have selected all networks so I would have the access uh, here here we go and if I go to the static website URL I should be able to browse this okay I'll try to browse and it might take a long because the firewall is updating. I've opened for everything. Now, meanwhile, <clears throat> I'll show you something which is very important. Uh, when I click on the networking, go to the private endpoint. Because while I was changing the screen, I, show, I, I saw this auto approved. Well, if you are the owner of the storage account, then it will be auto approved. If you are not the one who is creating the private endpoint, we need to, the owner needs to approve it. Okay. So it is more like when you create a private endpoint for a storage service in your VNet, a consent request is sent to, for approval to the storage account owner. If the user requesting the creation of the private endpoint is also an owner of the storage account, this consent request will be auto approved. All right, so it's still going on. Okay, we are good. All right, if I click here, you can see I'm inside the private endpoint. And if I go to DNS configuration, I have this private link blob core windows.net. And this is the private zone, which is which got created. If I click here, we are inside the private zone. And this is the A record for this IP address. Right. And here is the link. All right. So everything is all set. Uh, if I go and click on storage account, here is the private endpoint. Uh, and here is the network interface. Because as I said, private endpoint is a special network interface for an Azure service in your virtual network and it is approved. Uh, what else we need to check? DNS configuration we have seen. All right, I think we are all good then. Very good. Now, let's get back to the storage account to perform the lab. Right now, this storage account is open for everyone. As we have seen, we are able to browse. We are able to uh, check the containers and everything is hunky-dory. 
So let's quickly go ahead and close the axis. Okay. Let's and save. And meanwhile, I also show you if I have any service endpoint. I'm on the virtual network and there is the service endpoint. Uh, let's delete this. We don't need service endpoint, but why I was showing you before I delete, I wanted to share this. Private endpoints can be created in subnets that use service endpoints. Clients in a subnet can connect to one storage account using private endpoint while using service endpoint to access another one, okay? And the service endpoint is for the default. This is not for uh, our storage account. So it doesn't matter, but yeah, let's get rid of this. And private endpoint is from the subnet two, right? So let's get back to the storage account. It has been saved, saved, right? Now, if I try to access this, I, I cannot, it says it has already gone, right? the URL, the study website. And if I go to Storage Explorer and try to access my demo, I do not have the access. Now I'm going to open this virtual machine, uh, which is the part of uh, same virtual network in the default subnet. If I <clears throat> open this uh, uh, browser, uh, let's, let me open this one first. I already have opened this uh, Azure portal. I'm going to the storage account through my uh, VM, which is part of this virtual network where the private endpoint is created, right? And if I also have this uh, study website, let me try to browse it if I can. If I couldn't, then we'll figure out why. Oh yes, see, I can browse this and it lost. So it was picking it from the cache for sure. Now I cannot browse it very well. It shouldn't browse because we have not opened anything right now. The storage account is completely blocked. We have not selected anything, right? If I go to Storage Explorer, try to access the blob containers, demo. Okay, I can. That is interesting. Let me go to overview, refresh it, refresh it. Go to Explorer, Blob Containers, Demo, and I still have the access there. This is, this is nice. Oh yes. Uh, we have lost this, this one. All right, well, uh, just wanted to show you one more thing. I am not able to browse this, this, this particular study website that we have stored on this storage account, but we are able to access the uh, blob. If you could just guess where I'm getting with this is when we were creating the private endpoint, we were, we got the option to select what resource we want to access through this private endpoint. And that was blob that we have selected. We did not select the web. That's why I cannot access this, but I can access this through Storage Explorer. If I go to containers, I could see the containers. So what it means, it means we do not need to specifically allow the virtual network in the Azure storage account firewall, right? If you remember, we did allow it when we use the service endpoint. Why is this? Because Azure storage firewall only controls access through the public endpoint. Private endpoints instead rely on the uh, consent flow for granting subnet access to the storage service. So you don't need to, you don't need uh, a firewall rule to allow traffic from a virtual network that has a private endpoint. 
Okay, just to just to show you, if I'll minimize this virtual machine RDP, and I go get back here on my laptop, I still do not have the access to these resources, but I have also closed the access to everything. That's why I'm not able to browse the URL as well. If I show you under networking, I've not allowed any particular virtual network or subnet. All right, so that's how we enable the private endpoint and the DNS creates the DNS private zone creates when we create it. And that's all about it. So we have learned the client IP, service endpoint, private endpoint. And uh, these, these are more like the secure way of accessing the storage uh, <clears throat> account. We'll be talking about other uh, access methods in upcoming videos like SAS signature access policies and other stuff. A lot more coming on the security as well. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day.